Now. Yes, this meeting is being recorded, so which we know. Yeah, we have to choose if we want to stay on the the recording. I know, isn't that fascinating? <laughs> um, I guess it makes sense. It's a good workaround. I'm sure for some people this is an issue. Um, oh, it happened at a press conference I was at this week, so I noticed it. It's a new thing that you have. Yeah, to, it's a new thing. Everybody who agree. used it this week was like, "What?" <laughs> Okay, thank you, Skype. Always thinking about us. Nope, no, oh, wait, nope. It's we're not on Skype. Thank you, uh, thank you, Zoom, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Diana. My brain is like fried. <laughs> okay, so um, here's our color version of our monkey, 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 little cute face. Um, I'm working in a five by seven inch, so I probably won't be, oh, we'll see what I can do here. Uh, maybe I should bring this up a little bit and out. I was just thinking, I think I need a little bit more room than five by seven inches. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring this out a little bit. Oh, I did a frame on five by seven. Okay. That's okay. I, you can do, you can continue to do it that way. I was just looking and thinking I wanted to make it slightly bigger. Um, five by seven, it, it, I, I'm gonna say it doesn't really matter on this one because you, none of us are using a grid. The big issue with the frames is if we're using the grid, but I just looked and thought I wanted a little bit more vertical height. Okay. okay, I don't know what this is now, but we'll see. <laughs> it's a little bit bigger than five by seven inches. Okay, so the first thing I notice is that I want to identify the top and the bottom of his head, right? So we've got here, here, and I'll mark that. We've got here and here. And we want to mark those things now because we wanna make sure we don't run out of space. This is definitely one of those things where we could. And then if I go this way, and I notice if I go from top to, top to bottom here, let's see my pencil just about fits the whole pencil. And I run it across the edge. Well, actually let's do one more thing. Let's find the halfway point. If I were to draw a line, don't worry, I've got this in color, so we'll be able to see these. So if I was to draw a line from the halfway point. So the first thing I notice is that actually I need to bring my bottom a little bit over because this line is slightly slanted. Right, it's slightly slanted. So can you guys see that okay? Uh, there. And then if I check this line, I can see that, a and then I wanna find the halfway point of this line. So from the top, the very tippy point of his head, I think the halfway point is about here. Now I'm gonna check. Yep. So the halfway point is, un is about here. You want to find your halfway point. So it doesn't matter if your line is this long or this long, that beginning diagonal line doesn't really matter. What's most important is that you find whatever your halfway is, right? And it should be halfway. I mean, you can guess, but then you want to check it by seeing are, this, are these sections equal? And then we know that if we go from here to here at the halfway point, that's a pretty useful measurement. It's about, it's just a little bit less than the length. So if you notice here, I'm getting the length. This is nice because it's kind of symmetrical. So I know that when I draw this line across the center, that his eyes are gonna come fairly close together. Yeah, this is just gonna be a little bit less than
than the point in his head. So I know, so you see, I've got my length and my width. So these are the most important things to get correct. Also, they're not the same. Yep. So this side is longer. And this side's a little shorter. It's not divided in half. Yep, that's right. And then this is shorter. Mm -hmm. Let me move this down a little bit more. So these, I'll take a picture of this so you can see this. Yeah, that's about right. So this is your beginning. Yay, phone. Ah, what's going on here? Okay, there we go. Nope. Okay. Oh, Anik looks like she's having a good time. Okay. So I'm going to take a picture of this so that you guys can see it. And then here is the, here is our monkey monkey. What a cute guy. And I'll make notes here. Right? Longer. This side shorter. From here to here. Longer, a bit longer than the width at the halfway point. Hang on, let me take a better picture of this. There we go. And notice he's got a little tilt, so we should try and get that in too. So these lines help us not only to kind of see where things are, but also to get that tilt right. When I look at my lines, I think the tilt is not quite right. So I'm going to adjust it. When I come here and I hold my hand, well, let's see. And for the moment, I think it's okay. Yep. All right. And then we can start. Once we're here, we can start with those shapes. And by the way, I want to point out to you guys that uh, in not that long in time, I've moved you away from grids to drawing um, we've done a pretty good job of moving away from grids to drawing uh, more what you see. So I want to give you some credit here. You've been working. He's got this little point on his head. I credit you because it's hard. And then this side down like this. And then because his head is sunk so far into the ground on this side, we'll get um, his, you know, his shoulders are way up here by that halfway point. I'm pointing out the things that I think you wouldn't expect to see. So here is our second step.
Okay. And then once we've got there, you know, now we can start doing those inner shapes. I feel like the ear needs to be pulled up a little bit higher. Yeah, there we go. Uh, maybe this comes out a little bit more. So you see, I'm kind of tweaking as I start to go in and do, here, I'll do a different color for this one so we can really see the steps. And then there's this fantastic light dark shape, like sort of divide happening. So we'll definitely want to sketch that in. Oops, it's like it's blurring a little bit. There we go. Let's see. I can see this needs to kind of come in a little bit. And I might also, this is where I start to find out like, do I have my outer shapes right? I may have to bring that up a little bit. V is all enormous. Yeah, but that's always true. I mean, some animals. Yeah. No, it's true of everyone. I mean, well, I mean, let's put it this way. It's true of primates, uh, including us. Our, our ears are way bigger than you think they are. It's because we don't really look at them. Yeah, the ear is like halfway. It's like halfway down that little cheek area. Might have to. And you'll continue to tweak. Here's the thing that's interesting about this method. You're going to continue to tweak these shapes as you start to sort of eyeball, right? As you start to learn, I should say, how to eyeball where things are. Um, but what's interesting is that if you use this method, your tweaks become easier. You realize that things aren't as big as you think they are. Ah, and the nose is not aligned with that hoop thing it's got on the... On the... It's not aligned with the what? The nose, uh, like the angle of a nose that we see is not aligned with that thing on his head. Like, you know, when you go diagonally across his yeah, face? Yeah, that's right. You're right. Good, uh, good, uh, good, it's like yes. he's got a, this thing like a hat that's askew. Yep, yep. It's like he's got a hat askew. Good, uh, good eye. Sandra, great work, honestly. So good. Yep, exactly. We want that symmetry. And by the way, if we're trying to figure out, let's see where the nose is. Yeah, just like all primates, like us, <laughs> the bottom of the nose, right, is halfway. So I know my bottom of my nose is halfway down this edge. I'm sketching in the white. Um, I think this comes in a little bit more too. The white parts before we get these sort of masky parts of the face before we get to the actual uh, eyes. Cause it's easy to make, you're, it's, I, gotta, I, I envision everybody's gonna make these too big. Nose and then the mouth is a little bit higher than halfway up. Oh, hi. Now you're starting to come out. <laughs> a 
What a cutie. <laughs> Looks so serious. I know. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> like a little old worried man. Actually, one thing I found that's very different, or maybe more like us, but compared to the animals we've been doing, is OVRs are so much closer together. Yeah, yeah. They are really close together. Look at that. Um, is there even an eye space? There's almost an eye space between them, but not even quite. Yep, not even quite an eye space between them. Hi, Rashmi. Hi, Paul. Looking good. Looking good, everybody. So notice I haven't got to the eyes yet because I want to get the outer shapes of the ears in notice i still may tweak the shapes of the face as i start to get my my inner shapes in also remember that this side of the face is a little bit narrower than this side of the face <laughs> you're so cute hello little fella Hello, little fella. I don't even know if it's a fella. It might be a girl. <laughs> like, how do you know? Uh, sometimes uh, if uh, only the males are going to be seeing the heads, but if I could find out what, what it was, I'll figure it out. All right. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Let's draw him did, first. Did and you then feel we'll... that no pressure? Yeah. <laughs> No pressure, Sandra. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this is so much fun. What a fun little, what a, what a fascinating little creature. So guys, when you're doing the eyes, I want you to notice not just the eye, but what's, what shapes are above the eye and, and below the eye and next to the eye right? We're paying attention to negative space here so we don't make things too big. Good work, by the way, everybody, so far. And remember, let's take our time with the drawing. And what's nice here is that we've got, because we've got such a close-up and the eyes are so big, there's all these wonderful white splashy patterns, which we're going to pull out you can see I tried to kind of outline them here and paint around. There's also some nice darks. Within this white area here, there's kind of a little dark. As you start to get to be more attuned to drawing, you will notice plane changes meaning there's little shifts in direction in the face which change light for us, right? So there's this little area here and you'll really start to notice little areas like that. Okay, I know what it is. Mm, what is it? Well, it comes from Indonesia. It lives in a temple called Uluwatu. And <gasps> it's uh, the Uluwatu monkey. Um, uh, there's a forest that they, they live in. Oh, that's amazing. Um, and I see whether it's got a, a better name than this. But Uluwatu. we know where they live and that they're free. Uluwatu Temple in Indonesia. That's a cool place to live, eh? a forest in a temple. Totally. Yeah. Send, that to the, send that to the uh, thread, would you? Yeah. Yes. Um, a Suluwatu. Yes. And probably lots of tourists come and feed them and that you have a pretty good life. Uh, so they're a type of macaque. I think they're long-tailed macaques. <gasps> Wonderful. Um, actually, the one I found was from a hotel site. Um, yeah, I'm sure they're very protected. popular. Yeah, I'll protected. send you that one, though. It's... it's in pretty good shape here. Yeah, please. It fits uh oh, in. I think I muck. I think I mucked up his his second eye. So remember that the eye over here, a there's a couple of lost edges, right? Because it's in the darkness. 
So, uh, and it's smaller. So make sure they're still lined up. When I did mine my first time, I don't think I lined it up very well. There we go, that's a little bit better. Yep. Little guy, hello. There we go, this is a little bit better. And I think this is a pretty good shape. Right. Watch a monkey. Leah? Yeah. Why is the eye on the left looking a little uh, droopy than the one on the right? I mean, I don't see- My drawing the or the actual photograph? Your, uh, in your drawing or is it like that? I'm not getting it. I might've made it a little too big. No, the, the one on the other side actually. That's looking a little lower than the, like, I mean, they're not on the, yeah, if you see it's, it, it, they are like, you know, one eyes. I think I put my iris in the wrong place. Let me try that. Is that better? No, it's still lower. It's still a bit lower than it is, I guess, in the yeah. picture. But Oh, okay. Maybe I've made the eye too big. Let me try. Let me try again here. Oh, yeah, I see your point. Uh, I just made the eye a little too big. Learn from me, children. It's easy to make the eye too big. I made mine too small. <laughs> or too small. You can go the other way too, right? You can't really win drawing. Is that better, Rashmi? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the students have surpassed the teacher. Correcting the teacher. That's fantastic, actually. Um, it just means you can see it. You know, it's funny. It's one thing to see it. It's another thing to be able to do it, right? That's one of the things that we're learning here is that um, it takes a good eye. And actually, one of the things I really liked about teaching, particularly when I first started 10 years ago, was it forced me to see a lot of the mistakes that people make. Top, I learned from other people's mistakes, right? Because I could see them. I learned to see them. Uh, and that was uh, important and kind of fun. So that's why it's important that we work together, you know, that we see each other's work. And I guess anticipate from you've become very good at anticipating what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah, there's true. The same, yeah, people, you know, we all make this a lot of the same mistakes. That is true. Mine looks like a scary Halloween monkey. I mean, they are kind of, it's, this is also the drawing. So this is where. What I really want to do is just make sure. The tricky part is making sure your white areas stay white in the eye. Course, you poor babies are doing watercolor. Yes. Let's see. Well, yeah, Alana, we're the same. Like a human, we're the same. Monkeys and people. It's, we share like some of some of like 99% of DNA. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty much the same. Yeah, no, she's like, la you're laughing, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> they, are. they are immediate ancestors, just like oh, right. <laughs> this is like our cousins. The dolphins look at all of us and go, You fucking idiots. <laughs> They're like, Come on. Uh, guys, I'm going to pop out while you finish drawing. I'm going to pop out and uh, make sure Senor is happy outside or see if he wants to come in. I'll be right back.
Uh, Diana, is it too late for the uh, um, to apply for the uh, the LA Press Club money? Uh, no, it's not. It's ongoing still. Yeah, it is. We don't have a lot left, but we have some left. I, that's going to be my project today. Later. Yeah, try to get it in. Uh, by this weekend at, at the latest. Yeah, before tomorrow. There might be a committee meeting on Sunday, but I think some of the committee members are away, so it might not be for another week, but have it just in case. By the way, hi, Emma. Hi, Rashmi. Hi, Nidhi. Good to see everybody. I wonder what's going to happen to this class as we move into summer and people can go outside more. Will I still see you? <laughs> you can paint al fresco with the class. There you go. That would be nice. Like Jessica does a lot. I'm trying to find a cheap easel. Um, <clears throat> the art store was like $100. Uh, you mean for and, going uh, outside? For outside. There's yeah. no such thing as a cheap easel for outside, honey. You got to pay because that's a major piece of it. That's kind of like saying I want a cheap car engine. <laughs> well, but it, the if you have a field easel, they are pretty, they're not that expensive. Yeah, and but do you like using them? I always yeah, find I love those. using them. The field, no, I find that it depends on what kind. The field easels, I find a little bit shaky. Wobbly. I find them perfect because you can balance the feet and you can. Can get you send tough terrain? Can you send a picture across, Diana, the thread at some point? It doesn't have to be now yeah. uh, to show people what you're talking about. Yeah. Maybe we're talking about a different thing. Yeah. I, I'm talking about the ones that fold together to a, to a small, they're like a tripod almost, but with a. Uh, with the fasteners for a canvas. They're really good. I yeah. think I, I have two of them, I think, in my garage. <laughs> yeah, can you take a pic? Then just take a picture of it. That would be awesome. Yeah. Because they fall, they are so easy to carry with you and they mm -hmm. weigh very little. Mm -hmm. And oh, I love them. I, I really love them. But I know there are those that prefer to have the whole box, which I find cumbersome. Yeah, I guess I'm trying to think of what, let's see, Emma, looking pretty good. Good. Paul, not bad, except that Paul, you made your, you made your, um, you made your face straight like this, right? And what is he actually <coughs> doing? He's it's not curving as much. You're right. No, I tried curving it. It's just not as much. I'll, I'll redo uh, it. Yeah, just redraw. Do you, I, it's kind of messing up where you're putting your eyes, right, and your nose. Yeah. That's that's what's happening. It's messing that up. So, uh, you're creating symmetry where there is a tilt. Okay. Let's see, Olga. One, two. Mm -hmm. Nose is down too far, Olga. Mm -hmm. the, the nose okay. is down too far. It's really at the, this is the halfway point. This very bottom underneath the nostrils mm -hmm. is where that halfway point is. Okay. Um, and I don't, there is a little bit of, uh, you have this, I don't, I don't really, see, now I'm just trying to see if I see this shape. There's more space here, right? Look at the sh look at the shape of the face as blocks of medium and light mm -hmm. shapes, and construct. Try not to simplify, oversimplify what's happening. 
So okay. once you get his nose up, you're going to be able to get his mouth in the right place. Mm -hmm. Also, the eyes are not so almond shaped, they're rounder. You have this going on and they're really rounder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like that. Okay. Thank so, you. But you saw I kind of struggled with that too a little bit. You got the point in the right place. Uh, ear is also a little bit bigger on this side. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're so, you're so cute. All right. Okay, so Needy, you did the same thing Paul did. If you'll notice, this grid is at the this cross is actually at an angle. You have it straight up and down. So what you want, and that's messing up where your features are going. So what you need to do is move your drawing from here to here. And that's gonna help you get the shapes right on the bottom half of your face. Also, eyes are looking a little cockamamie. See, and so this ear comes up a little bit and this one starts down. You have them starting. The same thing happened with Paul. Because you had your grid straight and not at an angle, you, um, you're, you're, you're lining the ears up. They are not lined. The bottoms of the ears are not lined up. That's that. Uh, keep sending them over. How you feeling, Needy? Better? Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah. Hi. Better than, yeah, it's improving actually. Yeah. Good. Um, Emma, you put the eyes in the wrong place. Notice in this particular sketch, this is the halfway point, but the eyes come above. And you made them a little bit too wide. So that's why everything's looking a little bit off on your drawing. The eyes, this is one half, this is one half, and the eyes come right above the halfway point, right above. So, and then that changes where your nose is. Yeah, and in fact, yes, yes, that's, your, that's what's happened. So you're going to see it's going to feel a lot. And then you'll be able to nip these into the actual sides they are. And then you'll notice that the ears stop at the halfway point. Right? You've got them a little big right now. Better? Okay. Okay, Annika, you kind of did the same thing. Your, your line is going straight down here. No. This has I, to well, go I tried in. to tilt it. Anyway. You did not tilt it. I did. <laughs> I, did. I measured and tilted. But if it's not tilted enough, then I'll tilt it's it It's barely tilted. It's pretty much straight down. So this needs to be tilted. And this also needs to be tilted. So you haven't tilted quite enough. And the, the lines I made are yellow. Maybe you don't see them, but they are I see them. Tilted. I see them. This one's a little tilted. This one's slightly tilted. But in my view, it's still virtually straight down. Look, when I line my pencil up, yeah, it's almost you didn't tilt it. You think you tilted it. I guess my point is you think you tilted it, but you didn't. When I line so my I pencil measured, up, it's straight. So I guess I have to. You, you didn't measure it like that. Yes, that's I did. OK. <laughs> but I did measure it. I can agree with you. I did. How did you measure it? Did you hold your pen, your hand out like this and check the angle, or did you? What did I you? I tried measure? to look at the picture because I don't. I can't quite follow everything you do because it's ah. difficult. So I tried to look at the picture and, and go from there. Yeah. So I don't know what way you used of measuring, but it didn't. I'm I'm not trying to hammer it on you. I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, uh. 
Okay, I'm redoing it. Yeah, yeah, redo it. Like re, just, just you don't have to redo the whole thing. Just get the lines in the right place, and then things will look better. Uh, Leah. Huh. Yeah. Could you could you see the cross that I have made? You know whether the angles are right or not. Yeah. yeah. Let me see. Yeah, much better. Let me double check though. Hold on, I'm gonna hold it up so I can see. Yep. See, so I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing here, but I'm actually holding my arm straight and then moving it over here to check and see, right? So that's something you can do as well. That's a good way to measure. Uh, you got to keep your arm straight. Yeah, Rashmi, I think you have, I think this is too long, but let me check. I'm not, yes, it's entirely too long. Well, actually, yeah, yeah. So um, the, the, the face is too long compared to the width. Hold on. Yeah. I'll take a look and see. So That's I don't right. You don't have to redraw everything. You just this just this is just not quite wide enough. Mm -hmm. This needs to come the width of this needs to come out to here. Uh, out to about here. So if you look here, you'll see here, let me measure it and I'll show you. The width, which is from the bottom of the ears at the halfway point, comes almost to where his little point starts. So your width here has to do the same. If you check your width where your halfway point is, yeah, you'll see it doesn't. Well, it sort of does, but um draw oh. your one two yeah it's looking like someone has squeezed it yeah so also, I think to bring I, it just bring it out a little bit wider i think since i did mine five by seven which because i started that way it it got a little um Scr i didn't get up. it quite right yeah scrunched up yeah you know, that's why i like built mine out because i was like oh i think i need a little bit more space yeah right we need a little bit more space that was probably a good idea but that's okay because i started out at five boys five by seven <laughs> so so and rashmi the other thing is i want to make sure uh better paul better Yeah, there you go. And listen, I'm not trying to uh, uh, I'm not trying to be hard on any of you. By the way, I'm not trying to like, I'm not I just want to know when I hear things like I measured or I did this, I think something else is going on. So when I'm questioning you, I'm trying to figure out what like system you think you're using that's working. Because so, as you know, when we're learning to draw, like some things, we have these sort of ways of dealing with things that aren't always uh, helpful. Uh, it's our left brain coming in and trying to dominate what's happening. So if I'm asking you questions, I'm trying to figure out what you did and uh, to talk about the, to, to translate that into left brain, right brain logic, so. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it, you know what I'm saying. I'm not trying to be hard on you. I'm just actually trying to understand what you're thinking. I think you're great. I'm very grateful for your help. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. I don't, but I don't like to be me. Like, that's really sweet. You don't have to tell me that either. Uh, but um, but uh, it's good to, you know, it's interesting to be able to interrupt these processes and be able to figure it out. I made a lot of mistakes when I was painting. And honestly, I found some teachers that gave me some advice, but I didn't find a lot of teachers that were really willing to take the time to help me figure out my, my, my thinking, my wrong thinking, if that makes any sense. So I had to kind of learn it myself over time. So I'm just sharing with you my process as I learned. Um, and I'm still learning. I feel like I'm still learning, right? That. I think it's possible to just keep on going.
If you're mine now, you wouldn't even think it was an ape. By the way, here is Senor Hermes coming to say hello here. I'm going to pop him on just to say hello for a second. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, Hermes. Julie abandoned me. Hello. Did you guys see the video I posted of him? In the bathtub the other day. <laughs> Little maniac. <laughs> uh, um, let's see, I'm just looking. If I would say that this is a bat, people would believe me. <laughs> Oh, much better, Annika. Great. You got it. You got it. You got it. Uh, I like seeing the shifts. Olga, I feel like there's a simplification here, and I'm just trying to decide if that's my issue or yours. Maybe it's mine. Um, I want you to get, I want to really see, remember, we're doing watercolor. Well, you might not be, but I, I don't know if what you're doing, but uh, there's a problem with this shape. Mm-hmm. Right? I don't really see it. I see this, I see this, but really this kind of extends out here. You have this thing happening. You have this kind of thing pouching out like that. And mm -hmm. then you've got this coming down like this. And I don't think that's really happening. I think it's, I think this is what's really happening. Uh, I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's your rushing to simplify, oversimplify. You see what I'm saying? This monkey has a very particular shape. And I think you're kind of missing it in the race. So, yeah. There we go. Yeah. You know what? This yeah, monkey yeah, reminds me of Tesla's face. Remember, uh, Tesla? yeah. Tesla, as in Nikola Tesla? Thank you. Yeah, the, the portrait that you taught us, he also had a very angular look, you know? Here, hang it on. I still have, I have that one all. hanging. I'll go get it right now. Let's see. Hold on. Yeah, I love that. There he is. Not really. The nose, maybe. Wow, I see it. <laughs> Look at that. You just do that a little bit this way. <laughs> no, that's rubbish. <laughs> Well, but she is right that it's the same um, uh, position. The face is the same position. It's turned. Oh, I see. I thought you were talking about angles, angular face. But it's, it's just almost no one is ever straight, I suppose. No, no. With Hermes, what you should try is uh, let the sink let him drink from the sink with just a little bit of water. They love that. Rather oh than yeah, he does that, that too. <laughs> when Lion was little, he lived in the sink. I could barely do anything in there. Really? Uh, that's, <laughs> that's Julia. Julia. She likes the sink too. It's oh. funny, like, cause some cats hate water. <laughs> so Bengals love water and I guess Hermes, um, he loves water too. Yeah, he's so cute. He's obsessed with water and green things. If you throw him a green bean or a green bean or a um, piece of lettuce or kale, he loves kale, anything green. But he was chewing on the pineapple leaf. We had a pineapple in the house. He was chewing on the pineapple leaves the other day. He loves green things. 
Hope you have no plants in the house. <laughs> yeah, I don't basically. <laughs> or you did and now you don't. I did and now I don't. They've all moved other places. Leo, I sent you mine. I'm still working on the nose. Okay. Um, and take your time on this drawing, guys. Let's see. Mine kind of looks like a Teletubby. <laughs> yeah, a little yeah. bit does. He a little bit does. Uh, it is Teletubby. Hold on. That's where they come from, probably. <laughs> uh, Sandra, your nose is a little bit too long. So the same thing Olga did, the very, I, look here and you'll see, this is the halfway, I'm gonna mark it really clearly so you guys can see it. This is the halfway point between here, here and here. And that little nostril thing, that, and, and the nostrils are above the halfway point. They are not below it. So take a look at that and you'll see that. So it's the halfway point between the halfway point and the bottom. Yeah. yeah, so it's the halfway, if I divide this half in half, so yeah. it's the three okay. quarter point, you could also say. Let me see. I probably made that mistake too, but it's, I'm in acrylic, so I can make just it. Um, I'm measuring with calipers and it's exactly in the right place. I'm measuring from the top of the head, from the eyes, from the chin. Mm, it's not. It's too long. Something's off about your calipers. It's too long. You can see it. I can see it in your drawing. Well. So next week is a new month, you guys. Uh, for this class, it doesn't change anything. We're just going to keep going with watercolor. But you're, there's new classes to check in on. Uh, figure drawing starts on, uh, sorry, abstract art starts on Tuesday nights, uh, New York time. Um, so for those of you, there are a lot of people in Europe here that's too late for, make sure you catch the... Um, the recording, because I think that's going to be really good. Uh, Krista Trask starts as an abstract art teacher. She's really great. Uh, um, and uh, so abstract art starts on Tuesdays. And then Wednesday, we go to figure drawing. That's uh, US West Coast. So once again, late for Europe, but you can pick it up on the video. Thursday uh, is going to move to be back to drawing fundamentals. So um, but of course, anybody can do anything in the class. You can work on whatever you want and I'll help you. But the demos are gonna move to drawing, beginning drawing stuff. And uh, Friday will stay watercolor. Saturday stays beginning drawing. Uh, Sunday, pastel landscapes and, um, and, uh, and uh, oil and acrylic painting. And in oil and acrylic painting, we're gonna start uh, our demos. You can once again, work on whatever you want, but our demos are gonna be on uh, uh, painting, drawing, and painting the figure. Looks much better, Rashmi. Um, Rashmi, your eye is coming up higher than mm. this eye. Which one, it's, right? Uh, the left the, one. Our right is coming up higher. It should be a little bit lower. Oh. It's hard, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Life is hard, then you die. <laughs> there you go, Paul. It's looking good. Better. It's harder than it looks to get this to the right. Well, I'm just laughing because she corrected my eyes. <laughs> Correctly, she corrected my eyes, I should say. Oh, buddy, you want to go back out again? Are you losing it? Are you losing it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Oh yeah, you're the best. <laughs> For those of you who are kind of at this point, you may also want to 
on the edges. You can kind of give yourself a, don't go crazy. Actually, you know what, don't do that. We'll do that with paint. We'll get our fur and paint. So, uh, uh, Needy, I wanted to tell you that the gray, I know you had kind of funky colors, your green and your red, uh, when we were mixing Grisai, which we're going to do again. But I really liked how that uh, wound up being a good base for your top layers. So I would say, don't worry about trying to match the colors exactly if you don't have them, just do your best. Uh, because I felt like that worked for you. I was really pleased with your final result last week. I'd say that for anybody. If you don't have exactly the colors that I'm using, just fine, you know, as you know, use what you got. What about Payne's gray? Payne's gray is what you want. If you got it, I don't actually have it. But if you've got it, I know, buddy. You want to go back outside, watch Squirrel TV? Hang on, I'll be back. Anybody ready for me to start painting or you're still working on your drawings? It's up to you, you tell me. We have a whole hour. I guess we're still working on drawings. Uh -huh. yep. Better. It's still, I still feel like this eye is rising up. It's kind of rising up. Remember, we're, we're using this, right? This mm -hmm. should be happening. So mm -hmm. if any, one eye is like this, this should be kind of following this line. I'll fix it. Yeah. It's not about getting it right the first time. It's about recognizing and fixing it. That is yeah. the, that's the skill I'm interested in. I'm not interested in people who think they want to do things perfectly. Those people never last as artists. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, they just don't last. They, they, I've had one or two people that were so concerned about every, in my whole career, that were uh, concerned enough about every line that they put down that if it wasn't perfect the first time uh they just couldn't handle it they were like they could not they literally could not um handle being wrong uh and being wrong is essential to success in this particular um way of working right we i think that to... comes i think well yeah go ahead what, Paul? Um, that, that's, that, that's from a young age, I think. Yeah, like people worried about being too perfect, right? Like everything has to be perfect. Well, you know, they've been, they, uh, you know, at a younger age, they, they uh, for me, for example, at a young age, I, I had horrible penmanship and uh, with the crayons, I couldn't color between the lines and so forth. So uh, never, never even considered taking art class in high school, which probably would have been good for me. Right. Well, and actually, I think it's more universal than you think, Paul. Like, I think what happens is 
it's hard to get your pencil, you know, your tool to draw a circle, right? Um, it's hard to get, you have to learn, that's a set of skills where you have to be able to see what you're doing, visualize what you're doing, and then also get the tool to do what you wanna do. And you'll see little kids are like at varying levels of being able to do that, it's hard. Uh, and a lot of the things that we used to do, like cursive, like printing, like copying something a hundred times on the board, which got, which in the U.S. we got rid of because it was quote unquote not creative, um, is the most creative thing you can do because it teaches that skill. It teaches you to look, right, and be able to print. Uh, and hence, once that skill gets activated, it's a whole... There's a whole arena of skills. It's as I as I have said often. It's like learning to read. Once you activate the skill of learning to read, all kind of things happen in your brain. And if you don't know how to read, you have a frustration, right? You have a constant frustration. A, because you can't read what's going on around you, and B, because your brain is kind of desperate for that to happen. Your brain wants that feedback so we can grow that neural pathway and develop those skills. So. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's hard. And in our modern world, we seem to have forgotten how to use tools, right, with our hands. We're doing handwork now. I think I've told you guys many times the story of my friend's daughter. She cried and yes. was super smart. She cried, but, but at six, she was developmentally where every other kid at six is, which is sometimes they can draw a circle and sometimes they can't, right? and her, her concentration, everything was there. She could do everything else at a more advanced level except these basic sort of fundamental skills. Let's see. You're, you're still going up, Ra Rashmi. Uh, but, oh, okay. I'm putting the you're pencil. still going up and you're, you, it, you need to be coming down. Okay, but, but um... Is it the arch on top of that eye that's going up? It's the entire eye. The eye, you've got the eyes lined up straight. See? They're lined up straight oh, across okay. at the bottom. They have to come okay. down. You got it, got it. Yeah, there no, you go. Right. Now good. you can see it, right? It's easier to see. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, that's better, Needy. I still, Needy, I still feel like your uh, eyes need to tilt a little bit more. They still look like they're straight. And your nostrils need to come up above the halfway point. So the nostrils are too low. Bring them up above the halfway point, uh, but much better. It's hard, but you guys are doing great, by the way. Everybody's doing great. I liked the improvement I'm seeing, it's wonderful. Mouth is too low, Sandra. Bring the mouth up. No, because now we moved up the nostrils. Yes, so you gotta move up the mouth. Eyes look mm. nice, eyes look great. Ears look good. Proportions otherwise look good. I think, uh, Sandra, your eyes might be a little bit too far apart. So it I looks measured to me them. It looks to me, I'm just looking, I'm looking here and I see, I know you say, you're right, here, hold on, maybe slightly, let me, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they I'm are both. slightly too far apart. See, he's really got that little cross-eyed look. They need to come in a little bit. What you've done is exactly a human eye, what most, right? It's exactly a high, just, just um, I don't think it requires much, just bring this side in a little bit and bring this side in a little bit, then you'll be there. Oh move both eyes no no i think i need to move a right eye to the left the right. right eye to the left a little bit and then you'll be in shape good job wonderful you guys killing it you're killing it killing it anybody ready for me to start painting no no i'm okay, okay. if sandra is struggling with the eyes then i'm okay <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> She's, my, she's all of our benchmark, I think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all about the benchmark, <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. 
So the problem I find with eyes and why it takes so long is that there's so many lines. There's a lot. So yeah. there's the pupil and then there's the iris and oh, then there, there is the eyelid <gasps> and then there's, you know, there's a lid margin and on like this. These are so many lines. It's easy to get lost. I get lost all the time. Yeah, Annika, that looks great. You could, I think his eyes are a little bit bigger and a little bit closer. So you could just add an extra line down here and up here. It should be a little bit bigger. Yeah, slightly longer, yeah, like yeah. taller. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. otherwise, this looks great. <laughs> He's adorable. And Emma, great fix. I'm just checking to make sure. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're in good shape, honey. All right. I'm gonna start with the grayscale and then we'll go to color. Color's underneath here. So we have it. We'll work on it, but let's start with the grayscale. So uh, if you have Payne's gray, you can just use that. Oh, wait, here, let me put this here so you guys can see it here. This is where it gets troublesome. This is one of the reasons I'm painting smaller is so I can actually show you my mixing easier. All right, so as before, I wanted to remind you uh, that if you don't have paints gray, it's uh, Viridian Green. Look at how much better that color is. And a touch of Quinacridone Red. So that's a cool red. Um, to make your gray. And remember, if you use too much red, you'll get some, like I just did here, you're gonna get something that, look, actually that's okay. Um, you're gonna get something that looks too red or too green uh, on you. So what you want is a gray. Here, I'll take a picture of, so you might have to mix for a while. Here's the green. Look at that color. I love it. Here's quinacridone red. There's the, there's the red, there's the, there's the red of the cool red. And then together they should make something that looks like this. Oh. So let me take a picture of it so you can see it. But I think it's, I think color is much better on these. I think you can kind of see it. Looks like green, looks like red. I'm thrilled. So you, or, but if you have paints gray, you can totally use that. And remember, we're gonna do a very watered down version. And notice I'm kind of constantly, before I put any, every time I dip my brush in paint, I make sure it's, uh, I test it here to make sure it's not too dark. So in the darkest parts of my painting, I'm gonna go with a very light gray wash. I'm gonna leave the lightest parts of my painting just light. I'm gonna leave them with no color at all. So it's dark here. Remember there's some light areas in the eye. So be really careful as you go in to the eyes. And there's a kind of light little whiskery part on the dark side of his face here. Oh, this is just fantastic. Sandra, the light on this is perfect. God, I love it. It's so easy. So notice I'm kind of going into the dark areas, but it's still pretty light. I'm gonna build up my darks. I want my darks. Hey, Julia, do you have to be in my lap? Yes, she does. Mom, how can you even ask that question? Yeah. How can you even, Mom, are you rejecting me? How could you even ask that question? Mm -hmm. I'm so hurt. She just ignores me and, that yep. goes, and does whatever she wants. Does. Yep. So I'm gonna go into the eye on this side, but I'm still working around those white areas. Thank you. 
And then once I've got the darkest areas kind of mapped out, I'm going to go into the midtones, right? That's somewhere between light and dark. And I'm going to darken those too. So I see a little bit here in the light side of the face. So those are going to be lighter. So even more watery and watered down. Meow. Is that Annika? Is that your kitty? Yeah. I recognize him. He's got that. Yeah, he says hello. 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 Here's what's really nice about this. Even if I've got these little white areas here, I can still, even with this light wash here, I can still kind of preserve them a little bit, right? Here, let me take a picture of this so you guys can really see it. I mean, I think you can kind of see it, but. What do you want? Just attention. I feel like Hermes, oh, by the way, uh, Sandra, Hermes is almost one year old, June 15th. It's his birthday. June 15th, oh, Sandra's off, probably feeding her cats. <laughs> Julia will be two years old. Really? God. Yeah. It's amazing how time flies. In July. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I just can't believe that. Uh, when I I'm take I moved to my on this next layer, I've moved, I'm still with the gray. I've moved to my my sort of skinny pen. My skinny, sorry, my skinny brush. And I'm going in and I'm darkening some of the super dark areas. Still doesn't have to be as dark. I'm gonna lay go over with a different color on top. But notice how I'm trying to go a little bit darker. In some areas. Also, it's like super dark here and there's kind of this lost edge between the edge, the dark edge of the eye and where the uh, sort of bridge of the nose starts. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just darkening. I'm still being pretty cautious with my darks though. My top layers are gonna be where I really showcase that work. There we go. It's interesting how this layering uh, takes place. There you go, Rashmi. Looking good, looking great. Yep. Nice. Okay, now you're ready to start painting. Go ahead and start with your paints gray. Uh, Needy, this eye is still up a little bit too high. Bring it down a little bit and then you're in better shape. Good job. Nobody, I think thanks to Sandra's notation has put the little thing in the wrong place, little point on his head. You've all got it in the right place.
Leah? Yes. Sorry, my lion escaped. I oh, still is that why you? I was. I was. Did you get him back? No, but I've left the gate open and I'm keeping an eye. Shithead. Um, <laughs> oh shit! He's in the wrong place. I have to go get him. Again. Yeah, go get him. Go get him. <laughs> go get him. Cats. When I think about what kind of cat mother I am, I really worry about what kind of real mother I mother to children would have been. <laughs> Probably a helicopter horror show. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's funny to hear her corral them in. <laughs> And Let's see. There you go, Needy. You got it. You got it. Rashmi Needy. Yeah. Representing. Good job. Let's see. Nice, Paul. Great. Great. Is anybody ready for me to well, I'm gonna wait a little bit till I see a couple I see a couple more. Um, what do you call it? Until I see a couple more uh images come in. I think you guys are on it. Diana, how's yours coming? Um, 
<laughs> I'm scared to show you. Ah, don't show me. Don't show me. All right. Wait till you're wait till you're not no, scared it's anymore. Okay. I can <laughs> I can make fun of myself. But it will get there. It will get there in spite of what it looks like now. Right. Let's see. I'm gonna take All right, Annika, looking good. Looking good. Um, you can go in and kind of darken everything except this little light area on the, okay. on the right side, right? You can kind of fill that in a little bit with a lighter wash. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh, nice, Emma. So Emma, once again, this is beautiful. I love your brushwork. Be careful. You went a little dark here. So you got to like slow your roll, build up your legs. This is not as dark. I think we'll be able to pull it off, but you wouldn't, I mean, technically you're not really, you're wanting to go much lighter on your light hands, on your right hand side everywhere. So every dark, except for this one, these are all like twos or maybe a three, but it's not a four or a five. So just be careful. However, I'm really appreciating the, I like the mark making on this one. Oh, Diana, it's coming along. He's coming I along. You my love, bat. love him. Love him. I love how you use blue in your midtones. It's like in the darks and the lights. It's fantastic. Oh, he's adorable. Um, he's looking great. I, I wouldn't make fun of that. I think that's great. Okay, like I don't think bad. I would make fun of anything, but like I definitely wouldn't make fun of that. Um, it, it will get there eventually. Yeah. Okay. So I see a couple of people are ready to talk about it. Let's pull off the, let's reveal the colors. Voila. Okay. I definitely am seeing definitely burnt sienna and burnt umber. And it, as usual, we're going to start with uh, definitely probably a little gamboge or yellow ochre, maybe some cadmium red in a couple of places and yellow. Um, but we're going to start with my tried and true traditional mix that I love, which is burnt umber and ultramarine blue for the dark. So for the darkest areas, we want this kind of browny blue color. If you feel like it's looking kind of too flat, you can add a little burnt sienna in as well to make it kind of slightly warmer, but you want something that's like dark and you can see I'm mixing it down here. Yeah, nice rich dark. And when my paint is dry, I'm coming in, you can see that kind of the darkest, it's easier to see in some ways the value shifts happening. So the darkest areas are like here. and down in here. So you see how I'm kind of laying that color in. I'll, I'll definitely do at least one more layer. And I'm also kind of feathering the edge over here a little bit. Notice I'm not going all the way to the edge because it's a little bit lighter and there's this kind of cool orangey color is the same gray mix that you use. No. I said something totally different. I said my favorite oh, mix, which is burnt sienna, burnt sienna. Burnt umber, burnt sienna, and ultramarine blue. Here, I'll take a picture of it. Show you. Blue. Burnt umber. Burnt sienna. Should make something that looks like. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Somebody having issues today? Oh, sorry. It's, um, I got lying back, but now rabbit was jumpy. Uh, so you want something that's kind of dark like that. Here, I'll take it. So it's burnt umber. You can see it, but we can see it. Look, you can see the colors. It's great. I'm so thrilled. 
but I'll still take a picture anyway. Mm -hmm. That looks great, Rashmi. Great. So this is ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna mixed together makes that kind of dark. On here, down here, it's kind of like. So see how I'm doing this in kind of a spotty way. And the reason is, as I look more closely at the values, I can see that there's slight differences in values kind of on the edges of a lot of these things. I'm avoiding the eyes. I'm gonna come in and kind of brush in. This area is a little bit lighter, so I'm kind of moving around at the top of the ear, but the bottom of the ear here is darker. And over here on the side. So I'm moving around where there's darker areas, the darkest areas, and I'm adding in this new kind of rich bluey orange dark. Notice how much I'm moving around the eyes. A little bit here, tiny bit here. Yeah. And then let's see, I want something that's got, I think, I just want, do I just want base burnt? No, I want, I want burnt sienna with a tiny touch of blue, tiny touch of ultramarine. So a little bit different mix, same colors, basically. I want, but I want it more burnt, I want it more red. And in fact, I might add a little cadmium red to that mix too, just to, I'm going to test and see how that looks. I can always test to see how things look. All right, so this next mix, and I'll make sure to take pictures of it for you, is burnt sienna, no burnt umber, tiny corner of blue, a little bit of cadmium ways. red. This is for the shadow side, so we can get in here. Oh, and notice, okay, so don't do what I did here. This is still too wet, so I'll work on the light side and wait for this to dry. So let's see. Oh yes, I can use that color, which I just mixed. There's a little stripe of it here. Right. And then it gets lighter. I can add yellow ochre. Will that work? Or more cadmium yellow? Yellow ochre or gamboge. I can, to the same mix, I'm adding yellow ochre and watering it down. I'll talk about all these. When you guys are ready, just ask me what the mix is that you need and I'll tell you. Right. And then down here. So this is like kind of coming to the darkest areas. With oh, this it looks orange. great, me. Yeah. Yeah, well, she did Diana, a great job. Very advanced. She did a great job. You're the bar, Sandra. You're the bar. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Encourage your colleagues. You're the bar. Yeah, so you, you, see, introdu you introduced this technique to the Yeah, group. you did. Huh? You're the bar, Sandra. You're the bar. Yeah. I love it. True. I'm 
going to brush a little bit of this. I don't want to go too much into the darks because I'm, I, I'm the, my darks are still wet. But you see Lay, how I'm can taking. Can you take a picture of, of the mixture for uh, sure. so we can figure out? Yeah, how, absolutely. How On the that. light hand side, yes. So it's, yeah. um, here, let me do it. It's a burnt sienna. I have it off the screen here, but here, hold on. Because I've run out of room, but here, I'll, there it is. Burnt sienna, a touch of cadmium red, a tiny little dot of ultramarine blue, and then gamboge or yellow ochre. Which one do you prefer, gamboge or yellow ochre? I like them both. They're pretty similar. OK. Try. You try. See what you like. And then you get something that looks a bit, let's see, like, like this. That's the, so that's on both the light and the dark side. So it's mostly burnt sienna, right? Yeah, here, I'm taking a picture. Burnt sienna, cadmium red, gamboge, and a touch of blue. And as you want to make it lighter, you use more yellow. And as you want to make it darker, you use touch of more burnt sienna. I see it in a few places here. Notice I'm still pretty carefully preserving. So I'm gonna take a very sort of light yellowy version down here. Oh, nope, it's still too dark. Blanky. I really want a very light wash. That should stay just white. This should stay this kind of. So I'm kind of pushing this color up into most of the light side, but I'm still leaving light bits. We'll go into the eyes next, but I wanted to get that start. Oh, yes. And of course, let's get it down here too. More. Notice I'm leaving a little edge between the dark chin and the bottom of the body. There's a kind of a light fur scruff. And I'm trying to preserve that. So I'm actually leaving that just a light gray. I feel like you guys are really starting to pick up these techniques. I'm proud of you. Leah, I send you a color. Uh, I think it needs more red. Then make then add more red. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, add a little bit more. You're gonna adjust it, Paul, up and down depending on what part you're putting it on. So some areas are gonna be redder, others are gonna be more red. Mine doesn't look right, but it measures right. <laughs> send it, send it over. I can oh, probably it help. Matter. No, it, it measures right, so it's fine. You know, it doesn't take much to make something off. Yeah. It's like a millimeter reads yeah. like a massive amount. So if something can be, so you can still quote unquote measure right and things can still be off by like a millimeter. Yeah, um, no, I, I, once I put in the features, I'll see if I need to move something. Yeah, there you go. Nice, Sandra, great, wonderful technique. Love that. So Emma, I want you to take a look at Sandra's um, base and keep that in mind as you go forward. Notice how the gray on this side is not as dark as the gray on this side. It's dark, but it's not as dark. I want you to look at those values because that's a really good, that'll help you keep you from going too dark, I think. Just on future, take a look. All of you, but 
but uh, I noticed this. Good, Needy. Good. So now you can start working in this mixture. Here, I'll label it even. What I really think is great about this Grisai method um, is how, how much gray there is under everything that we're painting, right? And so it lays it there in a perfect way for us to kind of work with it as a base. Nice, Natalia. Good, good. I want to wait a minute. Good. I like it. Is anybody finding that as you're learning one medium, it's kind of affecting how you do other things? As you learn like watercolor, is it affecting um, your drawing? Is it affecting your acrylic painting? Is it affecting your pastels? Are you finding that at all? That should be. Yeah. That should, are you finding uh, it? Yeah, like um, since I've started painting, like mm. first acrylic and now this, um, I think my uh, like you know that entire smudging and mixing technique in pastel has improved a lot. I mean, yes. I can see it in my drawing, uh, in my pastel drawings from before and now. If I compare it, I right? Can see those transitions. They're new. Like I can see a nuance. Earlier, the lines used to be very hard, and like you know, you could clearly see. Now it's like those. Uh, the soft edges are very, like, you know, they've uh, improved a lot. So. Isn't that interesting? Because yeah. you, as you learn to use one tool, it influences the way you see yeah. everything else. Yeah. And, and it's almost impossible to put words on it. That's like the thing. I think a lot of artists who are really good at what they do struggle to teach it because it's hard to say. But you, what happens is an evolution happens. You become more used to this idea of hard and soft edges. You don't have to think about it. You just kind of do it right? Um, yeah, I found that I could learn to draw only after I painted for a while, that I had to approach drawing as if I was painting, then it made more sense to me. So as I became more attuned to shapes and things like that, my drawing got better. Um, soft edges, yeah, and soft and hard edges. Yep. Yep. That's the, That's it. The knit and pearl of the art world. So, so Leah, for this brown, you have used a burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, is it? Nope. I have it written right here. It's four colors. Oh, you mean which one? Do you mean the first one? Yes. The first one, the dark one is burnt. This is the dark one. This is the dark area here. This brown are you talking about? Yeah. This brown? Okay, if it's yes, this the brown, one. then this is what it is. It's four colors and a lot of water. This dark color, which is what you should put on first over your gray, is ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and burnt sienna. Here, I'll send that over. This is the first dark that's on the dark side, but the light brown color are these things. I definitely want to try this again, just with the, the just for the colors. Right? Mixing the, colors. mixing the colors is a big thing. Learning to mix is huge. Uh, it takes a lot of time. I remember the first time I introduced this gray, it took everybody, like every, a lot of people struggled with mixing the gray from red and green, right? Although y'all are getting to be very pro very quickly. <laughs> I actually, I, I was actually, I got it this time. I, yeah, I, it looks, like, see, right? I it didn't takes use a, it, but yeah. Yeah, 
It's great, right? Because you have if you have Payne's gray, it's easier not to have to mix. Um, I'll be right back, you guys. I'm going to give myself just a little bit more coffee. It's one of those mornings. How are we doing here, everybody? I have things to look at. Oh yeah, nice Rashmi, great. I know, Olga, I'm right there with you. <laughs> I really, yes, it is Rashmi. She is really, it is really cute. I know Diana's hard on herself. It's much better, much better. But I like that expression that she's giving. I'm getting darker here with kind of a darker version of that orangey orange that I mixed here it's very red down here I'm trying to get in some of that okay I think it's time to start working on the eyes so we're going to grab very skinny brush teeny little skinny brush and we're going to mix a little bit more of that burnt umber and uh, ultramarine blue. So we've got a nice dark here. And I'm gonna start by adding in those kind of darks. There's these kind of lovely rims opening up here. The pupil is also very dark. It's kind of a skinnier line down here now of course as i'm adding these darks in it's looking much darker than everything else so i know i'm going to have to go back in and darken but i want to start 
so the this dark uh there's that dark kind of tear duct on our left on here and then this is a skinnier What I'm going to do up here is kind of spread that dark down and around, make it a little bit sharper. I'm not putting it everywhere because if you notice under here, it's lighter. But see how I'm taking that dark and creating that lost edge in a couple of places up here. I'm using a lot less water here because I want it to be less drippy and darker and stronger. So see how I'm starting to add in those darks and look at what's happening as I do that. This is starting to lock in a little bit more, look less mushy and more. Distinct. I'll spread that out later as this dries. Um, but I am going to. So the question is, what are the color of those eyes? I think burnt sienna is involved and yellow ochre. Maybe yellow ochre and yellow. I'm testing up here, trying to find the color of the eyes. I think it's a touch of burnt sienna with yellow ochre and actually some regular like cadmium yellow. Touch of burnt sienna though. And I'm gonna lay it in light and I'm gonna lay it in. Let's see if I can do this around, I might have to wait. Let's see what happens. Around the whites, right? And here it's a little darker, so I, I can add more um, burnt sienna in to darken. That's burnt sienna and yellow and- uh, And yellow ochre. Yellow. Uh-huh, yellow ochre or gamboge, whatever you got. And this eye really is darker than this eye. So I'm using, I may go over with it. I'm gonna wait till this dries before I really get any where else with this. Um, I'm gonna go in with my burnt umber in ultramarine blue to add a bit of a line here, a very thin line, but a line, there's kind of a, so I'm going in with this to kind of get in my hard edges. There aren't very many, but there's a few. See, it's amazing what um, just adding those hard edges does Let's see, this is pretty hard edge actually. It helps a little bit. Oops, got some of that in there. Um, in a few places. That black of in his eye kind of moves up a bit, weird. Yeah, there's a little line. Yep. Yep, absolutely. I love how one can spend like an hour just looking at the shape of an ear or an eye. Mm -hmm. That needs to be even darker. 
So you see, I'm using this skinny brush, not much water and real dark, almost like a pencil line to kind of sketch in. And I definitely need to go darker in here. And then I can kind of go back in and start darkening to the level that it needs to be you know, these areas in here. And I'm now kind of paying attention to the edge a little bit more. Trying to create, I'm kind of using, I'm sort of scrubbing out my, brush here. Coming back up here. Yeah, there we go. Now we're starting to get something kind of interesting. I see kind of red here. So I'm going over with red on the top and in a few areas. Uh, I'm kind of making a bold move and going with some cadmium red. Of course, I immediately took it off in most places. A burnt sienna is probably better. I'm kind of losing my white on this side. So one of the things I'm going to do is go in with my brush and get some white on it and brush in in a few dark areas, fur. Uh, I'm not really wetting my brush too much. So you see how I'm kind of laying in the areas that are lighter. You can sort of see my brush has kind of a lot of color on it, a lot of white color. Oh, easy to overdo it. Let's see if I can. Any devil? Wow! Wow! This is Leon. Leon, naughty boy. He jumped into the neighbor's garden, which has a big dog that eats cats. Oh. Living dangerously, Leon. Mm -hmm. Until so basically you don't. A, a cat. Did I tell you about the cat uh got the uh the blue jay's baby? Oh. Oops. Apparently something got it. I'm not sure if it was a cat, but uh ah. there's a lot of predator. It could be a crow, it could be a starling. Well, it's it was late at night, so or a raccoon, found it, it or just... a raccoon. Yeah, I bet you it's a raccoon. The wit, yeah, probably, or a skunk. Probably raccoon. Yeah, skunks. Or I think skunk. are fairly. They don't eat meat, do they? I thought they more were vegetable eaters. <laughs> I'm going to my background now, which I'm going to on the right side which I'm gonna use it with uh, mostly burnt sienna and a touch of blue, just to help kind of define. And if I feel like that's too, not bright enough, orange, I'm using more burnt sienna and yellow, right? I'm gonna try to use this to define the edge of my little fellow here. That helps a little bit. And then on this side, it's a little bit darker. So I'm adding an ultramarine blue here. It's a little bit darker. And then here it's lighter. The eye mix mixes. 
You mean the actual iris is burnt sienna and um, yellow, yellow ochre. Are you finding no also red. your, huh? No red, like alizarin. Uh, uh, no, definitely not alizarin crimson. That's too cool. Uh, if you added any red, it would be cadmium red. But no, I didn't find that that was really helping. Okay. Yeah. I had a little bit of regular yellow in too. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Yeah, yellow yeah, yeah. And, and burnt sienna to help it get kind of warm enough. Yeah. So even though it's kind of light on one side here, if you want to emphasize your light on the right side, you can get darker around this edge so that we've got, you can kind of see the light like I've done here. You don't have to exactly follow what's happening in the picture. Yeah, he's starting to look pretty good. I'm still here kind of slowly building up edges. So I'm looking at kind of on the light side now, where are the dark edges, the darker edges of color? Here. So see, as I do that, I'm still working edges, right? That helps me kind of define. I a little bit lost my white here. I'm going to see if I can get it back. I probably can't, but we'll see. Eh, a little bit. Um, let's see. Oh, Natalia, that's coming along. Olga, great. <laughs> so I love your darks. Um, I'm just trying to think of what. Darken down here, Olga, to help pull out that little white scruff of fur he's got. Okay. Yeah, darken around the edge and um, also darken here. So make that really dark green if you're going to do it so that he pushes, the white kind of pushes yeah. forward. <laughs> Paul, that's actually awesome. I love it. It's like, it's, it's actually, the color mixing is good. And your, marking, your mark making is getting better and better. Thanks. Thank you. Um, there's something I want you guys to notice that wherever you are in the process, there is a beauty to it. I want you to really own the beauty of your work, uh, wherever you're at in the process, um, because there are some really magical things about it that are only yours, right? And they're not things that I can tell you how to do because you're just gonna find them out as you do them. There is a beauty to these uh, pieces that you're sending in that's very, that's just what, it's, it's just, it's a wonderful. <laughs> they're all wonderful. And I appreciate how hard you're working because that helps, right, with what's happening. Um, I am looking here at my eyes. I'd like to get them a little bit orangier. Let's see. Yeah, Diana, looking great. I'm going to continue tomorrow. I, okay. I have to go, but, but thank or, you. I love Are you going to jump into beginning drawing tomorrow then, which would be awesome. I'll try then, to do that. Yeah, yeah, try to do that. It's wonderful. It really came yeah. far. What are we drawing tomorrow? I might miss it because some friends are trying to take me out. I am, um, I am trying to think of what we're drawing tomorrow. I think we did a flat. I think we were discussed doing like kind of a row house, like a whole row house. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, it, and for those of you who want to jump into that class and then paint it, you're welcome. It's going to be a drawing class, but if you want to then paint it, you should come into that class and start with the painting and then with the drawing. So Annika, you can do that if you want to. It starts at 9.30 our time, if that's something that's interesting for you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but you know, you guys get out and have a good time too, right? Go on hikes and stuff. <laughs> it's supposed to be really cold this weekend here, it's strange. Enough. Really? It's supposed we've to be had, okay. We've so had like are... 90 all week and suddenly it's gonna fall like in the 60s or something. We are going, we have had 60s and 50s all week, and we're going into nine eighties, eighties tomorrow. So we are totally switching the other Washingtons. I'm coming in here to darken on another level. Now, at some point, when your paint dries, you might be able to put in a white dot of white, if you've got it, tube white. Um, in here to kind of re-emphasize those whites, might work. Is there any other color that we can use in the background or? In you can use color whatever color you want. Use? Just make it dark. Any, any color you want. Use any color you want. Just make it dark. Blue, green, yellow, purple. Just make sure it is darker. Let's see. Nice, Emma. Beautiful. So wonderful. Oh, oh, love it. So now, um, and you know, good say, like even though you went a little bit dark, I think it worked for you. So now we're trying to push, continue to push these lights. We're keep working these edges, adding little bits more detail in. Maybe, um, that's great, Emma. It's just great. You did good. Um, Rashmi, I think you went too dark on everything. You lost your lights, lights, this kind of area here should have stayed more white. Um, but do your best. Or sorry, not Rashmi. Needy. I'm sorry, Needy. I was looking at yours and thinking Rashmi. Um, so this is a little bit too dark. But keep going. See if you can darken here. Work your eyes. Let's see what happens. Oh, Emma. Great. This may be one of your mediums, Emma. I don't know if you're feeling that, but it's... Uh, it's really working. And considering that you had it really painted before January, I think that's really phenomenal. I still have a feeling that I prefer acrylic, but when I went back to acrylic, I found it really difficult. Ah, there's always <laughs> a little bit of a bump when you're go when you're working. Don't yeah, there's always a little bit of a uh oh my god. <laughs> So um, I always feel it whenever I go from one to the other. I'm always like, well, I forgot totally what to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's OK. OK, I got to uh, lay. I have to go. But, um, oh, well, right. Because we've really, actually today, gone really past time. Thing. Good. I'm so glad mm -hmm. you came, Paul. Yeah. Come anytime you want. OK, thank anytime. you. Anytime. Bye, everyone. Wonderful work. Bye. All right, I'm going to turn off the recording right now because I don't, because actually, technically, we've gone five minutes past class, but I want to stay a little bit longer.